We've examined the moral argument for God many, many times, and it's never actually survived the process. Just because you really want an easy answer for your morality, that doesn't mean it actually exists. But we're gluttons for punishment around here, and we're going to take a look at yet another example. So, let's get to it. I know we just got done with a long three-part series on Nate Sala over at Wise Disciple, and he really didn't do very well. But I did want to give him another chance, just in case he was just having a bad day. I suppose that happens, and therefore, before dismissing him as a complete loon, he deserves to be able to make a case, and that means we get to look at another one of his videos. Therefore, we're going to talk about the moral argument for God, which hasn't fared very well from the likes of Frank Turek and William Lane Craig, among others. Maybe Nate can do better. Let's see. Uh, Zach Feature. Thank you, Zach, for the question. Zach Feature. Is it Jack Reacher? No, it's Zach Feature. Is the argument for morality just another case of God of the Gaps? I think it depends on how you define your terms. I mean, God of the Gaps is just stuffing God into every place that you don't have a ready answer, sometimes even the places that you already do. So, if you're going to use the moral argument as a way to say, well, I don't get it, therefore God, then sure, I can go along with that. The problem here is that I don't get it, therefore God, is completely indefensible. You can just put anything in there. I don't get it, therefore invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies. It means exactly squat. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who just want to be comforted a lot more than they want to know the actual truth, which is why we end up with religion. But sure, let's see what Nate has to say. Okay. Mm. Just because we cannot explain our innate sense of morality yet doesn't mean that an explanation will not be discovered. How would you respond to this line of reasoning? Well, is the argument, um, the moral argument, the God of the gaps? No. God of the gaps refers to basically saying God did it when there is some kind of gap in knowledge with regard to science or the natural world. It's not limited to that, though. It gets applied to all knowledge. In fact, most of the standard philosophical arguments for God are just God of the gaps arguments. This stuff is true, therefore God. In fact, the moral argument is one of those arguments where this is demonstrably the case. It's just assigning God as an explanation for something that they either don't understand or they just don't like the actual explanation for. And that's a big part of it. I've seen Christians argue against evolution like that. They want to feel special. They don't like the implications of the best supported scientific ideas. Therefore, those just can't be true. The God explanation makes them happy. Therefore, God did it. And it's really too bad that's just stupid. Okay, so in other words, because we don't have a natural explanation for something yet, then therefore to appeal to God is to skip over whatever that natural explanation will be whenever it is that we discover it. Okay, that's what people typically mean when they use the phrase God of the gaps. It's just not limited to that. Now, I might be jumping the gun here. I have no idea if he's going to address this moving forward, but I figure I might as well just bring it up now. Just saying, I don't know, therefore God, that's ridiculous on its face. If you don't know, then you don't know. You don't just get to assign a favorite explanation to your problem because you happen to be uncomfortable not knowing. Yet, that is exactly what a lot of people do. And it's not just the religious, but it's a lot of people out there. And that is just irrational, no matter who is doing it. And if you're one of those people, knock it off. 
It is utterly childish. The time to think that you have a valid explanation is when you have evidence that said explanation is actually true and not one instant before. And I wish the religious would take that to mind, but unfortunately, most of them never do. This whole line of reasoning is silly. The question, Zach, that you have to consider is, why would you assume that there must be a natural explanation for the grounding of objective morality? Why would you assume that there is any such thing as objective morality to begin with? The answer here lies with emotionalism. It's like moral realism, which is really effectively the same thing as what Nate is trying to propose here. It fulfills an emotional need. Therefore, it gets declared as true without any evidence that it actually is. People just like the idea, but that doesn't make the idea true. That's why there are an awful lot of people out there that don't care about truth one bit, and that goes for religious and non-religious people alike. They're looking for the lazy way out, a solution that explains everything in a way that they don't have to think about it any longer, and it makes them happy to boot. But that doesn't actually exist. Sorry. Okay. You gotta... Th that question needs to be dealt with. You gotta think about that question, right? And when you press into a non-believer's response, you're probably going to hear something like this. Well, I start with the premise that the only things that exist are material. I have never, ever, ever heard an atheist say that. I don't start with any assumptions. I start with the evidence. The only thing that we have any evidence for at all is the material world. If you want me to accept anything beyond that, then you have to come up with compelling evidence to support it, and that's where the religious entirely fall apart. We don't do double standards. Nate is probably going to jump to a uh, faith-based assertion here that there is something other than the natural, and I'd have to ask him how the hell he knows that. Knows, not believes, not has faith. Knowledge requires some objective basis in fact. You can't rationally claim to know that leprechauns exist unless you have evidence to back it up. And the same thing goes for the supernatural. Put up or shut up. Because your fifis don't mean a damn thing. Okay. All right. So now we're, we're dealing with materialist presuppositions. We are doing absolutely nothing of the sort. We're dealing with a rational call for evidence and unfortunately for you, you don't have any on your side. The only one with presuppositions around here is you, and you're just projecting. Come on back when you have demonstrable evidence for anything that you believe. Because in that case, I doubt we're ever going to see you again. Okay, within that materialist framework, all of a sudden, God of the Gap sounds great. And it makes a lot of sense. I get it. Okay, this was actually um, my thought process when I was a non-believer, all right? I got saved when I was 30, okay? So I remember what it was like, all right? Good for you. However, like a lot of so-called atheists turned religious that I run into, they don't actually understand the rationale behind non-belief. It's not just, well, I don't believe it. There's actually a reason behind it. These people don't tend to be rational, skeptical individuals. And, of course, there are non-rational, non-skeptical atheists, but we're sticking to a theme here. They just went from not believing to believing without ever understanding the critical criteria behind any of it. Maybe Nate had naturalistic preconceptions like he says. I don't know. That only means that he wasn't doing intelligence right. Then, he just assumes that everybody is just like he is, or uh, was, whatever. Lots of them do that, but they're all just wrong. Anyway, keep going, because you're really not impressing anybody right now, but I'm willing to give you another shot. Except, wait a sec here, here's another question. Why do you adhere to the materialist view? Alright, let's talk about that for a moment. Let's shift the burden of proof. I mean, we do see that all the time. 
He's gone from answering a very simple question, is the moral argument a God of the gaps argument? And now he's trying to push this off on atheists who, at least in this video, have never even been mentioned because he doesn't want to have to have a coherent conversation on the relevant topic. And if you notice, they do this so often that I don't even know that they're aware of it anymore. Stop changing the subject. Stop being fallacious. Just answer the question. Give your views and be done with it. But that's never how it goes, is it? I hope they don't think we can't see straight through this because we can every single time. Because guess what? For a lot of non-believers, they're probably going to say, well, you know what? I'm a materialist because the evidence for it is all around me. All right. And there is no evidence for anything else other than what fits into the materialist framework. So therefore, I'm a materialist. Okay, great. So he knows the problem that he faces, but I'm sure there's an excuse for that coming up. There usually is. How is that not a valid way to view the world? Now, of course, I haven't seen any further ahead than this, but let me try to guess. He'll say something like, but you can't prove there isn't, as if that somehow proves that there is. That tends to get used pretty conveniently. If somebody came up to them and said the exact same thing about, I don't know, Bobo the tree god, well, you can't prove Bobo isn't real, you can be assured that they would demand positive evidence that Bobo existed. They know that that's how it's supposed to work, except when it comes to their own imaginary friends, at which point the requirement for positive evidence goes right out the window. So let's see if I'm anywhere in the ballpark, shall we? See, now we're, we're pressing further into details because now we're starting to hear their verificationism come out, right? <laughs> this is where you lean in and you, and you kind of whisper, excuse me, but your verificationism is showing. The, the verification principle is basically the idea that only those things that can, be, that, that can be empirically verified are the things that we should hold to or are meaningful. Yep, there you go. We think we're right, but we can't prove it. Therefore, we're just going to assert that there's a double standard for things that we believe that doesn't apply to anything else. Except that's stupid. They understand where they're going wrong. They've just got a raft of excuses for why the rules don't apply to them. Except they do. That's the whole point of having standards. They apply to everyone and everything equally, and the religious just can't have that. This is where they start to get really defensive. Let's watch. Okay, Matt Dillahunty appears to be someone like this. Other atheists appear to adopt the verification principle as well. But what just happened? Okay, this person started out with their framework a couple of steps too far ahead, in my opinion. All right, this is my response. Okay, they're materialists. Why? Because they're verificationists. Nobody ever said any of this. He's just yanking the whole thing straight out of his ass. Granted, this could be part of something else. I have no idea, but in this video at least, which is the only thing we can actually gauge, atheism was never even brought up except by him. Materialism was never even brought up except by him. Verificationism was never even brought up except by him. It's like he's running off of a script, right? Because that's exactly what he's doing. It's what most of them are doing. He knows the kind of answers that his intended audience is looking for, and he's just spouting it verbatim so he gets the hits and the likes that he's looking for. He's not answering the question. He's just going on a prescripted rant against atheism and, of course, shifting the burden of proof. Nate leave the damn goalposts where they are, and just answer the question. It really can't be that hard. Okay, but why are you a verificationist, though? Do you have an answer to that? Yes, I do. You have to know if the things that you're considering actually exist in the reality that we all share. So let's do a thought experiment and get rid of this verificationism stuff. Without it, what do you have? 
chaos, absolute chaos. You can't even have a coherent conversation with anybody else without some kind of standard that everybody agrees to. So let's go back to an example that I've used in the past, crossing the street. On the surface, it's a very simple act. Look both ways, and if no cars are coming, you can safely cross. But what about the invisible cars? Hell, what about the invisible dragons? If you don't rely on some form of verification, you're going to be standing at the curb forever, terrified to take one step because, you know, you might get mowed down by smog. Now, just about everybody's going to look at that and say, that's just stupid because it is. Nobody in their right mind is going to do that because nobody in their right mind is going to think that except for the religious in this one very, very specific instance, because it happens to benefit them. So, do we have a good reason for verificationalism? Yes, we do. Absolutely. But let's watch his excuses anyhow. Uh, well, you know, because this is just where I begin. This is my starting point for how I view the world. And at some point, you have to work your way down to some brute facts, right? Have you heard this before? No, because nobody ever said that before. This is just Nate making stuff up because he knows that's what his intended audience wants to hear. It just has nothing at all to do with reality. The religious really love to make empty claims about what atheists say, except we don't actually say it. That's why I've got him on video saying this crap, so nobody can tell me that I'm just taking him out of context. It's why I try to do complete videos and not just pick and choose little parts. It's because I expect people to try to verify what I'm saying. But I'm sure Nate here doesn't. Nate, just like just about every other apologist I've ever seen, wants to be taken at his word. He's welcome to correct me, of course, but in my experience, the religious are a very uh, top-down kind of organization. The people in the pulpit expect the people in the pews to just listen and obey. There is very rarely a question and answer period after the sermon, and in those very few occasions where there might be, the apologist is in complete control over the venue, and they're going to shut you down if you start to make them look bad. That's what this is all about, after all. Looks, not facts, not evidence, not verification. It's all about the optics. Oh, and making a buck, of course. You have to work your way down to some brute facts, and so this is where I start with. I start with my materialism and my verificationism. Okay, fine, but two things about that. Number one, that's not where I start. No kidding. You start with your emotions, which is one of the worst conceivable places that any rational person can begin the journey. Your fifis don't matter. So, not only is he getting atheism completely wrong, as if that's any kind of surprise, but he's showing that he's got a bad epistemological rationale for his belief system. I mean, assuming that I'm right about where he's going to go next, I guess we ought to give him an opportunity to tell us himself. I wouldn't want to be accused of misrepresenting him or anything, so uh, take it away, Nate. So now what do we do? Okay, as a Christian talking to a non-Christian, what do we do now? Your starting point is not my starting point. Christians don't start where you do as a non-believer. So how are you going to convince me that I must start where you started? That's number one. But it goes both ways. You have to convince us that your starting point, blind faith and emotional wishful thinking, is a good place to start, and uh, good luck on that. This is where it goes back to what you can prove. Where you choose to start is really kind of irrelevant. It's what you can defend that matters, and the religious can't defend anything. And I mean defend with more than, wouldn't it be really, really nice? because that's just dumb. Now, I know that you're emotionally attached to the idea, you really wish it was true, but how do you go beyond your wishes and your dreams and your blind faith and onto some kind of demonstrable, epistemological approach that doesn't rely on your fee-fees? That's what matters, at least to rational people, but as we all know, the religious aren't rational.
Their entire belief system starts and ends with, but it makes me happy. And they have a hard time getting it through their heads that everybody else isn't just like they are, because we're not. And that's why they fail. All right. And number two, when you start out with materialism and verificationism, your worldview cannot account for non-material entities for for non-material properties yeah demonstrate that any of those exist go ahead because your say so doesn't matter your faith doesn't matter where's your evidence because again we get back to the simple fact that they're fine with this so-called materialistic worldview for everything else right up until they get to their own imaginary friends then all that has to go away because it gets in the way of their comfort and their wishful thinking. It makes them realize that their beliefs are indefensible and uh, they can't have that. It's why they do what Nate is doing and change the trajectory of their presentation. Instead of answering the question on screen, they go on a rant about atheism that has absolutely nothing at all to do with the task at hand. They can't possibly be bothered to defend their own views because their views have no rational justification. They just really want to believe. And so then humanity starts trying to wrestle with age-old questions, the, the, some of the oldest questions out there, like morality. Where does morality come from? Before we get to that, let me step back for just a second. Just because these are ancient questions, that doesn't make them good questions. It doesn't make them rational questions. Whether anybody likes it or not, there actually are bad questions when you don't comprehend the real world, or rather in this case, when you don't want to comprehend the real world because your uh, fifis get in the way. When we start to talk about non-material things, supernatural things would probably be more apt in this instance, the question has to be, how did you get there? You can't just start from your imagination and pretend, well, it's all got to be true. You have to have some basis for even thinking that these things might be real. What is that basis? The religious don't have one other than, wouldn't it be cool? But uh, cool doesn't get you anywhere remotely close to objective reality, does it? Just because you really want it, that doesn't mean that it's there. Just because people have believed in it for a long time for bad reasons, that doesn't make any of it worthwhile. Anyhow, I think we're finally getting into morality, which, uh, isn't that what this video is supposed to be about? Let's see where this finally goes, because I'm getting kind of tired of the preamble. Right, that's a huge discussion. Okay, that didn't just pop up a year ago, you know, two years ago under COVID. No, that's the age-old question, right? But now you, as the materialist, have created for yourself a gap. I didn't do that. We're still waiting for you to show where your beliefs are even remotely rational. Do you think you might be able to get to that, please? We're all getting kind of tired of waiting. Because, again, we can do this for absolutely anything. Just make it up. Barney the Dinosaur is responsible for morality. Why? Because I said so. That's really all the religious are relying on. Their own say-so and the say-so of people in the distant past. Great. How did they know? Where did they get this information? Because they just made it up just like you are. And because it still appeals to you on an emotional level, you're satisfied to keep playing ball. But that doesn't make it true. The only gap here is the one between your ears. You're confusing what you want to be true with what is demonstrably true, and you can't figure out that all of the problems, they're all on your side. It's not us, it's you. You're the one complaining that the rational standards don't get you to where you desperately want to go for emotional reasons, so you just reject the rational standards in one very specific instance, so you can just play make-believe and come up with answers that you're emotionally attached to. But that's dumb, it really is. Nate is just making a fool of himself, but uh, honestly, what else is new? Christians didn't do that. You did that. 
And you did so because of how you started out, because of your framework of viewing the world through your particular lens. Now, all of a sudden, there's, there's all kinds of gaps from your perspective. I don't have a gap, all right? Christians don't have a gap because in the Christian worldview, the universe consists of two major categories, the physical and the non-physical. Prove it, because here's the problem with relying on worldviews like so many apologists tend to do. They assume that just because they have a worldview, that makes everything in their worldview true. No evidence required. Just because they've chosen to look at the world a certain way, suddenly they don't have to defend their own side. They're just right because they want to be right, but that doesn't actually mean anything. I think it's funny that he's using footage from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a fantasy creation that nobody in their right mind thinks is real, to illustrate his point. If you adopted a worldview that Doctor Strange was a real person and had magical powers, that wouldn't make any of it true. Worldviews don't alter reality. You don't just get to make up your own facts. If you try, as a lot of Christians do, you just prove that you're an idiot. So knock it off. The material and the immaterial, or the non-material, whatever. And so Christians have a, they have a logical explanation for things like the laws of logic, for reason and rationality, um, the properties of the mind, and even for objective morality. Non-believers do not. No, they don't. They have emotionally comforting explanations, not rational ones. That takes us back to the definition of what rational is. It is based on or in accordance with logic or reason. The religious don't remotely have any of that. They're just stapling the word onto their fantasy beliefs because they really hope it's going to make them look better to those on the outside. But it isn't what you call something that matters, it's what that thing actually is. All they're really doing here is asserting with no corroboration whatsoever, with no evidence whatsoever, that God answers all questions. At least, if you don't look at it very hard. How do you get there, though? That's the question that they never seem to have any good answers to. They just call on faith and fifis and then run away and hide. That's not how rational people operate, which is why religion is not remotely rational. Knock it off. You're just making yourself look dumb, Nate. I mean, they they try to have explanations, okay? Some non-believers try to, you know, squeeze these, you know, these non-physical categories into the materialist framework, but it doesn't fit. Here's what the religious are doing wrong, though. They want explanations. They just don't care if those explanations actually mean anything. They don't care if they're actually correct. They just want to feel like they know. The non-religious, by and large at least, since I don't want to generalize, we don't do that. We only say that we have answers if we actually have answers. We need evidence that those things are actually so before we say that we've answered a question. If we don't, then we don't. And all of our answers, whether anybody likes it or not, they're all provisional because we learn new things all the time. And we may have to go back and revise what we thought that our answers were. We just say that we don't know because we don't. The religious, again, in general, for the same reason, they tend to say that they do know when they have absolutely no objective basis for making that claim. It's just that wanting it doesn't mean anything. Just because you want to understand, that doesn't mean that you do. And this is a big problem. Just because you say that you have an explanation, that doesn't mean that your explanation is actually true. And that's all that actually matters. They never get beyond the wishful thinking stage into anything remotely resembling verification. The verification is what matters, and they don't have any of that. In fact, they pretend that they can't have any of that. And that's why their beliefs are so utterly pointless. And that's why there are these gaps. But it's only on your side. Because you don't understand how to think critically about anything when it comes to your religious beliefs. 
they will say, we have answers that we like. But they aren't concerned whether or not those answers are demonstrably true. Then, when we say that they can't prove it, they just get mad at us like we shouldn't care if it's true so long as they get their own emotional comfort from it. And that's where the whole house of cards starts to collapse. Saying, well, you have gaps. That's ridiculous. Sure, you can have no gaps from a religious perspective if you just make something up every time you have a problem. When in doubt, God did it. Well, how do you know that God did anything? How do you know that God is real? They're not remotely concerned about any of that. They don't put that to the test and they make up excuses for why they can't and then they refuse to talk about it any further. It's just stupid. It's like saying, we're right because we're right because we really want to be right. But how do you know that you're right? Faith, of course, because it's really that dumb. So, no, I, I really don't think that the first Wise Disciple video was a fluke and, and it was a bad intellectual day for Nate Sala. He really is that stupid. But you let me know if we should look at any more Nate Sala videos in the comments. In fact, suggest some down in the comments if you want me to look at them. Let me know what you want to see. If we stop looking at stupid around here, uh, we have nothing to do. So, um, you know, let me know. Boom, <laughs> <laughs>